In this video, we'll be talking about patterns and first differences. When slope is consistent or the same, we have a linear relation. When slope is consistent, when the constant of variation is the same, we have a linear relation. So let's try a problem. Let's see if the following pattern is linear or nonlinear. Specifically, we're looking at the number of houses. So one, two, three, or four houses, and the number of lines that it takes to draw each house. So here, for one house, we need five lines. Two houses need five, nine lines. Three houses need nine lines plus another four, so 13, and so on. There's a few things we can do to figure out the pattern in this relationship. If we look at the number of lines column, you should notice that every time we add a house, we're adding four lines. So when we increase, we go up by four. If I want to imagine this pattern continuing, if I go backwards, if I go to zero houses, well, I can't assume that I would have zero lines because then that would break the pattern. To go to zero houses, I need to take the five lines that it took to build one house and following the pattern, subtract four. So when I have zero houses, I really have one line. This exercise that we're doing, looking at the pattern, is something called finding the first difference. So when we find the first difference, we look at a row, and we look at the y value in the row, the dependent variable, and we subtract from it the number in the row above. And we do this for all the rows in our table. So I look at the y value, 9, and I subtract the number in the row above. And I do this till I have no more rows to subtract. We can see that every time I do this, I get the same number in my first difference column. So what are first differences? They are differences in consecutive y values when there are evenly spaced x values. So first differences are differences in consecutive y values. Remember consecutive means in a row with evenly spaced x values. And if the first difference is constant If all of the first differences are the same, then the relationship that we're looking at is linear. It would be a straight line if we graphed it. So going back to this example, I can see that all my first differences are the same, therefore this pattern is linear. Let's 
try another example. If I show you this table of values, can we determine if this relationship would be linear if we graphed it? And we'll determine if it's linear by calculating the first difference. So again, we take a y value and we subtract the y value above it. So one take away zero is one. And we continue for all of our rows. So nine take away four is five. 16 take away 9 is 7. And here, this is where this relationship is different from the previous one we looked at. My first differences are all different numbers. So we can say that is not linear. Let's try another example. Given the graph that's pictured, can we find the equation of the line for this graph? We should ask ourselves first if this is partial or direct variation. Remember that it is direct variation if the line goes through the origin. It's partial variation if the line is anywhere else. So here we're looking at partial variation, which means when we're finding the equation of the line, we're going to use, which means when we're finding the equation of the line, we're going to use y equals mx plus b. M is the slope. M is the rise of the graph divided by the run of the graph. We can pick any two points to try and find the rise and the run. Here I've picked the point 2 and 0 and 5 and 6 and I can see that the graph is rising 6 units and running 3 units. So my rise divided by my run would be 6 over 3, or I would have a slope of 2. So filling in my information, I have y equals 2x plus b. b represents the starting value, or as we saw in class, the point where the graph crosses over the y-axis. So here that starting value is negative 4. So my equation would be y equals 2x take away 4. And now we've come to something called the rule of 4, which is a relationship can be represented in four ways. We can represent a relationship with words. We can represent a relationship in a graph. We could represent a relationship with numbers or a table of values. And lastly, we could represent a relationship with an equation. So four ways to represent a relationship. Words, graphs, numbers, and equations. So let's try and use the rule of four to represent the following graph. We already have our graph. Let's see if we can represent this as an equation. Again, looking at this, this is partial variation. So we're dealing with the equation y equals mx plus b. I can identify my starting value. My starting value is positive 4. My 
I need to find the slope, and I can find the slope by calculating the rise and the run. So I go up, pardon me, I go down 4 and over 2. So my slope would be negative 4 divided by 2 or negative 2. So my equation would be y equals negative 2x plus 4. As a table, or in numbers, I could simply look at my equation. I could simply look at my equation and create a table of values. When x is 0, y is 4. When x is 1, y is 2. And so on. And finally, we can represent this in words. You can get creative and make a story up, or you can keep it simple. I could say that this relationship is a partial variation with an initial value of 4 and a constant of variation of negative 2.